Good morning. My name is Laura Campbell and I am the Waikato Diocesan School for Girls Monetary Policy Challenge Ch Team Governor for 2011. Also in my team, we have Jennifer Shedd, Kayla Liddington, Abby Manns and Gabrielle Weimer. We have decided to hold the OCR at its current rate of 2.5%. This is because of several influencing factors, including the weak global economy, which has led to low GDP growth for New Zealand a mere 0.8% for the March 2011 quarter. We have the high exchange rate that New Zealand currently has with the American currency, the Canterbury earthquakes and the impact they have had upon our economy, and the fact that inflationary pressures that we are currently experiencing in our economy are originating from outside and uncontrollable sources. There is a large gap between the recovery of advanced and emerging economies. Advanced economies such as the United States are facing slow growth whereas newly emerging economies are on their way to a full recovery. Natural disasters over the last 24 months have severely decreased international food stores, resulting in a secondary global food crisis, as can be seen there. Civil unrest in the Middle East has led to sustained price rises in oil. This price rise is exacerbated by uncertain supply and high demand, and can be seen on the graph there. Global equities haven't increased significantly due to a slower than predicted economic recovery. This has led to lowered risk this has led to lowered risk appetite, meaning that investors are not willing to put funds into volatile investments. As can be seen on the graph, the equity markets of America, Germany and Australia are relatively more volatile when compared to the equity markets of New Zealand, Japan in the United Kingdom. This is a graph showing New Zealand's GDP growth by production. As can be seen here, the business cycle is clearly shown in the smooth data in purple. New Zealand is currently in the recovery stage of the business cycle and we believe we should hold the OCR at 2.5% because in the recovery stage there is surplus capacity in our economy. By utilising these resources fully, we can increase our production and increase aggregate supply without encountering any significant inflationary pressures. For 2011, the New Zealand Government announced a fiscal deficit, with the main focus of the budget being the 2012 Christchurch rebuild. This will lead to increased growth in the construction sectors, which will lead to increased GDP and aggregate demand. This will put upwards pressure upon inflation. The government plans to fund the rebuild using Kiwi bonds, which means that the funds needed can be sourced domestically rather than increasing our international borrowing. The funds are still a leakage within our economy, however they will be re-injected when put towards the rebuild. This policy of using domestic funding rather than international borrowing is in line with the government's policy of increasing national savings. Consumer confidence rebounded to 112.5 basis points for June 2011, up 9.2 basis points from the previous quarter as measured on the ANZ Roy Morgan Index. Likely factors as an increasingly strong labour market and rural income growth, with rural areas showing the greatest increases in consumer confidence. Also, seasonally adjusted values show that consumer confidence has reached a high since August of 2010. Retail sales growth are also increasing, which is likely to lead to an improvement in our domestic economy. This will be further boosted by the Rugby World Cup later this year, and retail sales growth for 2011 is expected to be at approximately 5%. Business confidence rose in both the March and June quarters of 2012, 2011, despite a slight decrease after the February Canterbury earthquake, and it is now higher than levels recorded prior to the September Canterbury earthquake, as can be seen here. Benefits from dairy returns and the continuing trend of the global economic recovery is likely to mean that businesses can look forward to a potential period of high growth headlined by the Rugby World Cup and the following Christmas period. This is shown in the National Bank Business Outlook surveys, where business confidence rose from 38.3 basis points in the previous month to 46.5 basis points for June 2011. New Zealand dollar has been consistently hitting new post-float highs compared to the American dollar over the last quarter, and this is due to the weakness of the American currency. 
With this exchange rate, our imports are becoming relatively cheaper and exports relatively less competitive. This is expected to continue as the Rugby World Cup approaches, leading to increased demand for the New Zealand dollar, causing further appreciation. New Zealand dollar has also had minimal increases against the Australian dollar, the Japanese yen and the euro. This has led to New Zealand rising on a trade-weighted basis. The trade-weighted weight, trade weighted index for New Zealand rose 2.7% for the June 2011 quarter when compared to the March 2011 quarter and 4.8% when compared to the June 2010 quarter. In March, for the March quarter of 2011, New Zealand also experienced its best terms of trade since 1974, with a 0.9% increase for that same quarter. This is due to high dairy and meat prices, and with these commodities still at high prices but beginning to stabilise, we expect that our terms of trade will stabilise again at a higher than seen point, possibly creating a new normal. New Zealand's balance of payments has been relatively constant, however, in the current account there are two balances of interest. The balance of services we expect to increase in the near future, with the Rugby World Cup leading to an increase in our export of tourism. Also, in the balance of goods, theoretically we would expect a decrease with the high exchange rate. However, as New Zealand's main two goods exports are dairy and meat, and with New Zealand supplying over a third of the world's dairy exports, we believe that as these products are necessities and we have a large share of this market, we will not see any significant decreases. As of late 2008, New Zealand has been seeing a trend of increased household equity as homeowners make moves towards paying off mortgages rather than increasing them to access more consumption spending. House prices and house listings have also begun to stabilise following decreases in early 2011. That can be seen there. Unemployment fell to 6.5% for the June 2011 quarter, down from 6.6% for the March 2011 quarter. According to the Department of Labour, unemployment is expected to fall to 5.3% by 2013. This is due mainly to, rugby world, to employment opportunities arising from the Rugby World Cup and the 2012 Christchurch rebuild. Headline inflation is expected to, re to remain outside the policy target agreement for the short term, with CPI inflation currently running at 5.3%. However, underlying inflation with the effects of oil price rises excluded, is expected to remain outside near the outer limits of the policy target agreement. We believe that we should hold the OCR at 2.5% because driving our headline inflation, we have oil price rises, we have the effects, of the, effects of the October GST price rise, and we have high commodity prices. All of these are outside of the Reserve Bank's control, with the GST price rise being a one-off, and commodity prices and oil prices being imported inflation. Because of this, they are outside the Reserve Bank's control and we believe they should not make moves to counter this. What I have explained has the following effect on aggregate demand and aggregate supply. Over the next 18 months, we expect having the increasing aggregate demand with the highest impact, we see the government injection necessary to support the Christchurch rebuild. Following that, we have the increase in business investment in Christchurch, Unemployment easing, leading to decreased government spending on transfer payments, increased government revenue from income tax and increased consumption expenditure as disposable incomes rise. Also increasing aggregate demand, we have the high dairy prices. Decreasing aggregate demand, we have the government's budget goal of debt reduction, increasing equity, households looking to minimise their debt for growing consumption spending, Kiwi bonds, which is another form of savings, and the reduction in net exports necessary due to the Christchurch rebuild and the high New Zealand dollar. Affecting aggregate supply, again increasing with the highest impact over the next 18 months, we have the lowered cost of imported raw materials. This is due to the lowered cost of oil and the high New Zealand dollar and is particularly relevant to our economy as we begin the Christchurch rebuild. Also increasing aggregate supply, we have business confidence increasing. This leads to increased investment which increases production capacity which increases aggregate supply, also leading to increased levels of employment. Decreasing aggregate supply, we have the decrease in production capacity, which occurred in the Christchurch earthquakes. However, this is decreasing every day as businesses rebuild and resume normal operating life. 
This has the following effect on our economy. We have an increase in aggregate demand and aggregate supply, with a significant increase in real GDP and a minimal increase in the price level. This is because New Zealand is working in a deflationary gap. We are working before full employment, with resources such as our labour resource still running above the normal rate. Because of this, we can utilise the spare capacity in our economy and utilise our resources fully, closing the output gap and increasing aggregate supply, which counters the inflationary pressures raised by the increases in aggregate demand that we expect. With the expected economic recovery and Christchurch rebuild continuing into 2012, we expect that the OCR will need to be reviewed in the near future. However, for the present time, it should remain at 2.5%. Thank you. Thank you for that presentation. Uh, so now we have 20 minutes of question and answers. Um, as before, we encourage you to discuss it amongst yourselves first, um, and then if someone could bring that together and give us a final answer. Um, there are microphones in front of you, so if you could please make sure to speak up. Uh, that would be great. So I'll start things off. What do you think the impact of the Christchurch earthquakes are on inflation in the medium term? Well, in the medium term, that's looking into the future. So that is, as we are looking to reinvest, there will be an increase in aggregate demand. But that investment also leads to an increase in production capacity, as we said earlier. <coughs> that leads to increases in aggregate supply which counters the inflationary pressures raised by the increases in aggregate demand. With the Christchurch rebuild, we're also going to have increased employment, which leads to increased consumption expenditure. And at the time of the earthquake, we didn't really, we didn't really see a decrease in economic activity because it's sort of, sort of displacement mm. of activity with like, we had increases in other sectors of the economy. The reallocating. Yeah, the reallocation of consumption expenditure as well as people look to purchase household necessities. Okay. So, to summarise that, we expect the impact of Christchurch and the Christchurch rebuild to have on inflation in the medium term. We expect to see a fairly balanced, uh, maybe a slight increase but not significantly. This is because as employment increases due to the Christchurch rebuild both in the construction sector and as people return to their jobs, which were lost due to the Christchurch rebuild, their disposable incomes will rise, leading to an increase in consumption expenditure. However, that as businesses rebuild, we're going to see an increase in investment. This will not only lead to an increase in aggregate demand, but also aggregate supplies, production capacity increases, and this will counter the, rise, the rises in aggregate demand, leading to a fairly balanced effect, although there may be a slight increase in inflation in the medium term. Thank you. Okay. Why does the Reserve Bank have a target band for inflation of 1% to 3%? Well, that creates price stability and that Which is the main goal of the Reserve Bank. Yeah. And that fosters confidence, which allows investment to occur. Yeah, and if, it, um, if we have deflation, then people will hold off spending, so they need to keep, the, um, keep people spending in the economy, keep it going. And also, we don't want to have too high inflation, because that might cause a uh, price wage spiral. We don't yeah. want that either, so neither is good. So we want to keep them. So we that range. Right. Okay, the Reserve Bank has a price stability range of one and three percent because deflation is deflation is bad for our economy, as we can get stuck in things like wage. Oh, as deflation, <laughs> <laughs> we can get into a deflationary spiral and will lead into like the recession and downturn phases of the business cycle. People and we need spending, yeah, people off holding off spending, which creates the deflationary spiral. And we also need inflation not to be too high, so that people still, the value of their savings and the value of their incomes are still, like, are not decreasing. Yeah. And so they still have purchasing power. And also we don't want to have inflation too high as we can get stuck in a wage price spiral, as consumers are going to demand higher wages as a result of the high inflation. But we want to remain getting inflating prices to keep the economy stimulated. Okay, very good. Um, you noted in your presentation that currently inflation is above the target range of 1-3%. to So why wouldn't we increase interest rates immediately to bring it back into target? 
Yeah, one of one of the occurrences. Yeah, yeah. Some bank control. Yeah, imported, imported inflation. Yep. So we have so affecting our inflation, we've got imported inflation. Yep. The GST price rises from October last That's year. Right. Yep. So those are both uncontrollable. Well, GST is a one-off price, right? Which yeah. the Reserve yeah. Bank doesn't think doesn't try to control that because it's inevitable. And imported inflation, it's out of our control. Yeah, they use like raising interest rates um, to do with domestic pressures on inflation. Mm. Yeah. To influence spending and investment. Mm. So if it's outside domestic, if it's pressures that aren't domest from the domestic, then they're not going to try and control them. Is it good? Um, so in summary, um, the reason the Reserve Bank doesn't raise the interest rate straight away is because of un uncontrollable sources. There, that includes imported oil, which is uncontrollable, and the GST raise last year in October. Um, and they only control interest rates that are domestic inflation. So it's out of the Reserve Bank's control, so they're not able to uh, stop this. Wouldn't be prudent. Yeah, it wouldn't be prudent to stop this. Good. Okay, so currently we've got a very high exchange rate. What are some of the implications of having such a high exchange rate on the Reserve Bank? Okay, so with a high exchange rate, we're seeing um, our exports becoming relatively more expensive to other countries, which could potentially slightly decrease our exports, but yeah. with having a third of the world's dairy market, it won't have significant effects. Yeah, also is still insulated against this with our dairy and high growth in China. And running at 9.5%. And India as well. Yes, yeah, like developing China. They're still demanding our products. So they're still demanding our greatest exports, so we're sort of insulated against that high exchange rate affecting our exports. And then so we have the increases in import. Mm, our imports are up 4% and um, in our last review and that's caused, that's caused a really good terms of trade. And they're relatively cheaper which is good as we begin the Christchurch rebuild because all the raw materials that we're having to import, such as steel and glass and everything like that, that's relatively cheaper, meaning mm -hmm. that the government is having a smaller than a smaller budget deficit than what could have been required if the exchange yeah. rate was lower. Okay, so the implications of the high exchange rate upon the New Zealand economy, we expect that it'll lead to it could possibly lead to a decrease in net exports, but as as I said in my presentation, our exports are not only necessities like main dairy and meat. And also as we have a large share of this market, we do not expect a significant decrease. And that will actually lead to an increase in investors, I mean exporters' profits. That's particularly relevant as well as with the latest polar blast, as the Met Service gave pr prior warning to the farmers and lambing season and calving season was earlier. There has been about a million less deaths than last year's polar blast. Although there's still a shortage in the lambing market, that means there's a million more lambs that New Zealand can sell, leading to higher profits, which will be especially received because of the high New Zealand dollar. Um, lifestyle changes throughout India and the high growth that China's currently experiencing, 9.5% for the previous quarter, mean that demand for our dairy is still high as India changes lifestyles and the wealth distribution becomes more even, more Indians are looking to purchase our dairy. And so as that drives up, the demand for our exports drives up, keeping the price of dairy high. We have an increase of 4% in imports for the previous quarter, which is especially good with the high New Zealand dollar imports are relatively cheaper, which is, is particularly relevant with the Christchurch rebuild beginning. So all of that we're feeling is having a positive effect on our economy with the best terms of trade that we've currently experienced this year. And so we're expecting to see a new normal created with our exchange rate possibly in the near future, with the American and Eurozone still experiencing sovereign debt troubles. So we think it's actually going to have a positive effect on our economy and help stimulate growth. Okay, so what are some of the tools that the Reserve Bank could employ to reduce the uh, exchange rate if they wanted to? Well, we have. If they have money still, they could drop it in to their economy so that. Mm. So they can have the dumping of money into the yeah, and currencies. Yeah. So that it will bring the dollar down because um, there will be more supply and demand. And decrease. 
and we can also have um, a it's not a particularly prudent time in the economy to do it, but you could decrease interest rates to decrease foreign saving and again decrease the demand for the New Zealand dollar. Yes, that's good. And the other thing they... Okay. Um, okay, so I think that to control the dollar, the high dollar, the Reserve Bank could um, put some currency into the banks and then that will increase the supply, so it will decrease the dollar a little bit. And also they could um, decrease the interest rates, but although it's not a very good time to do that at the moment with our current state in the economy, and that would lower demand or oh, that lower the overseas savings in New Zealand and that would lower the demand for the New Zealand dollar which would decrease. Tell me what would be the implications if one of the rating agencies like Standard & Poor's or Moody's uh, lowered New Zealand's credit rating? Uh, yeah, decrease confidence in the economy. Created for uncertainty. Yeah, volatile. Also volatile. Volatile. Yeah. It could increase our cost of savings from overseas. Like yeah, it'd be harder people to. people want, wouldn't want to lend to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It would see tightening of overseas borrowing and could lead to increase in funding costs. Yeah, the availability of international finance would decrease. Yeah, so it spikes. And New Zealand's a very. Like, we relies on this overseas borrowing. We yeah. borrow 300 billion million dollars a week, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We borrow a lot, so we rely on <laughs> borrowing and it would make it very difficult. Especially with the Christchurch rebuild coming up, borrowing is a big part of the government's 2011 budget. Yes. Having to borrow to support this. Okay, so the volatility and we've got, so we've got, yeah, decreased confidence created from the uncertainty, yeah, which, which leads to lower investment. And decreased spending by consumers as their confidence is also, which would decrease inflationary pressures. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, we ex Before you answer, do you think it would have any impact on the exchange rate? On the exchange rate, so if we have decreased confidence, we're having decreased aggregate demand, I think it would lead to a decrease in the New Zealand dollar as yeah. Yeah. foreigners, um, it's not such an attractive investment anymore, being mm. created because of the volatility and uncertainty. Yeah. So they're not willing to. It would have a spike and then a new normal may be created. Mm, similar to what's happening currently with the American currency. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so and then to do exchange rate decrease. Okay. So we expect we would expect that the effects of a credit rating downgrade made by an, a firm such as Standard and Poor's to have we would expect volatility and uncertainty to be created. This would lead to an increased in the cost of borrowing for New Zealand as New Zealand becomes a less certain destination for lenders and that decreases the availability of finance and that's particularly troubling to New Zealand especially as we begin this time of Christchurch rebuild. We'd see decreased both consumer and business confidence as again uncertainty is created. This leads to decreased investment from business confidence which leads to decreased aggregate supply and decreased employment. We see decreased consumer confidence, which leads to decreased consumption spending as consumers choose, choose to save, which is actually a leakage from our circular flow economy. We have the decreased exchange rate as the volatility and uncertainty makes New Zealand a less attractive place for foreign investment and foreign savings. So that leads to a depreciation in the New Zealand dollar, which would lead to our exports becoming relatively more competitive and would probably begin the stimulus for restabilising our economy. So would it be a good or bad thing? I think overall it would be a bad thing at this point in our in the time because yeah, yeah. entering the uh, recovery, recovery. Mm. and something like that could put us right back down, back into a recession. Yeah, yeah. similar to what we're seeing in America, America. with the double dip recession yeah. idea. Yeah, do you wanna summarise? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> we think it'd be a bad thing at this point because New Zealand, although it's in the recovery stage it's still relatively shaky and still relatively uncertain and as 
consumer and business confidence is still relatively low, we think that a credit rating would have a significant impact at this point in the economic and could set us back a large amount of time during the recovery and could lead to possible fears of a double dip recession as what is occurring throughout America and parts of the Eurozone at the moment. Uh, just a follow up to that, so you think that um, a ratings downgrade is a bad thing at this point? Do you think there's ever any time where it would be a good thing? Okay. Well, I think the only time that it could be a good thing would be in the boom. Yeah. yeah. However, in that point, you've got governments attempting to run surpluses to decrease yeah. inflationary pressures, yeah. so it's unlikely that it will happen. Yep, so we have all of this being good, but as we have a budget surplus, it's unlikely. Okay, so we have a decrease. Yeah, so just all around it causes a decrease in inflationary pressure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we, in summary, we think that the only time it could possibly have good effects on our economy <laughs> would be in a boom, which means it is unlikely to happen as at that time the government will be running a budget surplus. But it would, why it would be good to happen in a boom would be because it all around decreases inflationary pressures. Okay. Thank you. So, another question. Why does New Zealand typically have higher interest rates, say, compared to other OECD countries? I saw a big grin on your face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about this because... Yeah. This morning. <laughs> yeah, because um, New Zealand is a relatively small economy. We, we need, need to, to attract invest yeah. investment in our economy. And yeah. it's good to encourage and outsiders to invest in our economy because we don't actually have the capital to do some ourselves. of the things yep. that we do. So we need we, to yeah, We're trying savings. to attract those foreign investors to provide us yeah, our bad saving. Yeah, so we need, to, we need to market ourselves as an attractive savings destination. Mm -hmm. And the way we do that is through high interest rates. And New Zealand is historically bad, bad savers. savers. <laughs> <laughs> and we normally have more stable growth than other OECD countries. Well, in summary. <laughs> <laughs> New Zealand is, we're a bad saving, we have a bad history of saving. So we have high interest rates to attract investment in New Zealand because we are a small economy. So we can't, we can't fund ourselves, we need people to invest in us so that we can run our economy. We can get capital. Follow up to that, why are we such bad savers? I think now we're making looks to become better savers, better savers with yeah. talks mm -hmm. of like compulsory Kiwi saver. But um, historically, we've definitely improved. But since that um, bad government mm. deficit, yeah, but then we're looking to make Kiwi saver compulsory as well. I'm sure that might safe. help us a bit. And as well, we shocks savers? to our economy affect us. A large amount, like Japan's rebound from their tsunami and earthquake and nuclear disaster, has been quicker because they're better prepared to deal with this. They're more prepared a for natural disasters that happens very often there, but also they have the economy to deal with it. Just We're remember to focus on why are we bad savers, not yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. not what are yeah. Although it's great, like what are the implications <laughs> and things, but but why? Is it because of height? Levels of imports, possibly, because we don't produce a lot. Yes, and mm -hmm. we did used to produce wool in high amounts, and then we all we put a lot of into yeah. a, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of our um, we produced a lot of wool, and then that didn't get sold. So we so did to remove, to remove that, and that was okay. spending more money. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. We believe that some of the reasons that New Zealand is a country that's typically bad at saving 